All right, boys and girls, welcome back. I hope you had fun conducting your insect scavenger hunts. Now let's continue our investigation 1.2, designing an isopod environment. Please turn to investigation 1.2 page in your science notebook. In your science notebook, you should have written the focus question. What moisture conditions do isopods prefer? If you haven't written the focus question in your science notebook, please do so now. In order to observe which moisture conditions isopods prefer, we're going to watch an investigation video and count how many isopods are in each type of soil. Please make a table just like this one so we can record how many isopods are in each soil type after watching our video. Please pause this video and make your science notebook look like mine. Now that you've drawn your table, let's watch our video and count how many isopods are in each soil type. Just like your table is set up, we will watch, we will observe the dry soil, the wet soil, and moist soil. All right, boys and girls, let's take a look at which soil our isopods went to. We're going to count the total number of isopods in each soil. So here's one. And let's watch the video to see the rest of them. I have to move the soil around because sometimes the isopods like to hide. There's two. And three right here. So it looks like in the dry soil, we saw three isopods. Please go ahead and write the number three in your table from your science notebook. I'm gonna let you watch the wet soil and then see how many you can find and then we'll come back together and make sure you we saw the right, the same number of isopods in this soil type. All right, so how many isopods did you see in our wet soil? I saw one, two, three, and four. Please write four in the science notebook, please. And let's take a look at the last soil. I'm gonna double check, see if there we missed any. All right, so how many did you see in the really wet soil over here? I only saw this one. So go ahead and write how many isopods are in each soil type. Let's learn some more about our preferred environment. Animals move to the conditions of an environmental factor that are most suitable for their needs. So. Let's think about which soil type our isopods preferred, okay? That's gonna be their preferred moisture conditions in their environment, right? So were the isopods in, were there more isopods in the dry soil on the left? How many isopods were in the somewhat wet soil in the middle? Did you see the most isopods in the very moist soil on the right? I think these isopods are like Goldilocks. They like soil that is not too dry and not too wet, but just right. So if you remember, the soil we had in the middle was where we saw the majority of our isopods. Let's look at the second bullet right here. The conditions of a given factor that an animal moves to and remains in are the animal's preferred environment for that factor. So the factor that we tested was moisture. 
just like Goldilocks. Like uh, if you remember reading about Goldilocks, maybe whenever you were in uh, lower elementary school, how she didn't like a bed that was too hard, didn't like a bed that was too soft, liked one that was just right. So I like to think of an animal's preferred environment like Goldilocks, finding what is the condition that is most suitable for their needs. That's their preferred environment. What's just right. So let's answer our focus question now. What moisture conditions do isopods prefer? Based on our observation, you can answer this question. Please pause the video and answer the focus question in your science notebook. We're going to test one more environmental factor to help us learn about our isopods preferred environment. We're gonna learn about light. How do you think we can set up an investigation to see what light conditions isopods prefer? Do you think they like a lot of light? Or do you think that not a lot of light is just right? Our second focus question is, what light conditions do isopods prefer? You already know what's gonna happen next. Please pause the video so you can write this question down in your science notebook. The way we're going to test what light conditions isopods prefer is by placing our isopods in our container. So here's our container. It's gonna look like this. We've made a dark area out of construction paper. Here's our little dark area. We will leave the isopods in the container in a lighted room for about 30 minutes, and we're gonna let them decide where they'd like to go. So we have our isopods all over here. We'll, once we have our isopods in our container, I will drop this down right here, and then they get to decide, do they stay out here or do they go in our dark area? So what light conditions do you think our isopods will prefer? Do you think they will like the warmth of the light? Is the warmth of the light just right? If so, they'd probably stay out here, outside of our construction paper. Or do you think they wanna to go to the dark area we made for them? Is the dark area just right? Let's watch and see where our isopods went after we left them alone. All right, so now that we've left our isopods all alone, let's go ahead and take a look in our container and see which light condition they preferred. Have some isopod, have an isopod over here. Another one moving around over here, couple out here. Let's take a look underneath our dark area. Oh, what do you see? I have a couple that are hanging on to the sides over here. And then I have one, two, three, four, five. six, seven, eight isopods. It looks like that were underneath our dark area. Interesting. Did you notice that most of the isopods were under the dark area? Were you surprised by the isopods not staying in the light? Why do you think they prefer a dark environment instead of a lighted environment? Think about all these things while we answer our focus question. What light conditions do isopods prefer? Please pause the video and answer the focus question in your science notebook. I like to think about the light conditions isopods prefer, like what I normally do when there's a lot of light outside in the middle of the day. I usually go into my apartment, a building, or somewhere that is in a darker environment. It's not exactly the same, but I hope this helps those of you who were surprised by the, isopod, by the iso isopods choosing the dark conditions over the lighted conditions as their preferred environment. Observations and inferences. Let's follow along as I read. You have made a lot of observations of organisms. Observations are the information you obtain through the use of your senses. Remember your senses, sight, smell, touch, taste, hearing, okay? So those are all, whenever you use your senses to get information, you're making an observation, okay? Last week, we observed the mealworm cycle. We got to look at the mealworm larva, 
turn into, uh, make it grow to bigger, to get bigger and bigger. Then it pupated, and then it became an adult darkling beetle. This week, we observed isopods and their preferred environments by testing their so which soil type and how much light they prefer. Remember, we looked at the three different soils. Remember that we just take, took a look at our isopods and let them choose. Do they want to go to the dark environment or do they want to stay in the lighted environment? So we also answered a lot of questions throughout the millworm life cycle and throughout today's um, and yet in all of our isopod investigations this week, we made inferences. So let's take a look at what that word means. An inference is the meaning you make from your observations. Based on your observations, you can make an inference. An inference is the meaning, meaning we make from our observations. You have been making inferences this whole time and you may have not even known it. Every time we answered our focus question after observing a video, you were making an inference. An inference. Good scientists make inferences or they get meaning from their observations. You're almost done with science today, boys and girls. So please complete your vocabulary crossword puzzle using this word bank, with the following words. We have isopod, remember the isopods that we looked at, the crustaceans that we looked at. We know the different conditions. We looked at the moisture and the light. We made observations, that's whenever we look at something. Oh, I know you know what a terrarium is. We built that last week. Also read an, uh, in our FOSS ebook about that. And preferred environment. Think about that Goldilocks. What is the thing that is best or most suitable? So if you need any help while you're completing your vocabulary crossword pu puzzle, just use your word bank. There will be another sheet that will have all of these words on it that you can use as a reference while you complete your crossword puzzle. If you still need help or aren't sure how to do the crossword puzzle, maybe don't remember the video from last week, please contact your teacher. We're happy to help. You did a wonderful job this week. Have an awesome day, my Osprey scientists.